Hey everyone, welcome back to the second video of our making of a golem character series. So for this video, I think we're going to dive right in and I'm going to start really refining the face features. So we want to get the eyes looking right, his teeth, his mouth, his ears and all this stuff looking uh, closer, more in line with our concept. Because right now, as you can see, he's looking pretty goofy. So uh, we're going to keep plugging away at this and just refine this guy and just keep cranking. So I think what I'm going to do to start is let's get his eyes looking right. So this character came with some like material painted onto his eyes. And so in order to undo that, what we're going to do is come over here to uh, material, this little M button, click that on, turn off our Z add. So that's going to remove our sculpting ability, uh, but it is going to allow us to paint with the material. So. Make sure symmetry is on by hitting X on your keyboard and then just paint on the eye over the character and that weird shininess will kind of go away. And the eyes must not be perfectly symmetrical. I don't know why it didn't paint out. Uh, and then we're also going to take the texture. So if you click on the RGB, make sure that your color value is set to a full white and then click on this. It's just going to it's going to get rid of that weird uh, poly paint look. So um, the eyes are kind of uh, real small. So what I'm gonna do is reset my pivot by clicking this guy, so now they're to the center of the eyes. And I'm gonna scale these eyes out. What they do is they scale from that center pivot, so we're gonna have to drag those back into place by clicking the red arrow. And just kind of align those a little bit better. In fact, what I might do, well, we'll leave it for now. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to uh, geometry and then in the Dynamesh, I'm just gonna Dynamesh these spheres and see what they do. It looks like it completely gets rid of, it's weird. We're gonna bump our resolution a little bit to like 344 and hit read Dynamesh. It's doing kind of weird things. Uh, I'm just gonna smooth these. I just want a perfectly round sphere and we can add the irises in later after the fact. And now I have Alt left clicked on my face geo, so that is the active sub tool. I'm going to switch to my Damien standard brush, which is you hit D on the keyboard, it'll just bring up the Damien standard. And I'm going to try to carve out these eyelids a little bit better, just to make them look a little more inset and kind of um, just kind of try to achieve a better look here. Smoothing, holding shift, and one thing, one crucial detail I forgot to mention in the last video is I know how to push in my geo, right, by just left clicking. But what if I want to pull out? The way that you do that is you hold Alt on your keyboard and then left click, and those things will come out. So just left clicking goes in, Alt left clicking does the inverse, and that's the same with all brushes uh, throughout the ZBrush uh, brush library. So let's take one more good look at our concept. And I'm going to one thing that helps with me is I have to compartmentalize tasks, you know, and I don't know if that's the ADHD in me, but I have to really think of if I'm trying to eat this whole pie at once, uh, it's not going to work. I'm never going to get this thing done. So for me, I'm going to focus on the mouth for now and getting these teeth working, getting those kind of popped out, getting this jawline working. So for now, I'm going to focus on the lower face, the jawline area. So I'm going to I'll tap back over to this. Make him have like less of a masculine jaw because I don't really want that. I just want him to have that square kind of shape, but he doesn't need to have dimples or anything. This guy isn't like Mr. Incredible or, uh, you know, he's not a Pixar character. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use my move topological brush because I want to move that bottom lip out just a little bit more kind of get rid of that little crease underneath, underneath the lip because I want him to appear as though he's got these uh, giant teeth underneath that are kind of bulking out his, his under, his lower jaw, his lower lip here. Smoothing subtly. I'm going to move these up the upper lip in. And let's take a look at these teeth and see what we can do with those. So. Click on the teeth and go down to solo mode so we can take a good look. And they are very much the uh, the wrong shapes, so I'm going to switch to my snake hook brush. And with symmetry on, I'm going to start moving these guys out a little bit. 
And one way that you can you can adjust these a little more easily is by going to transparent mode by clicking this little button, activate uh, edit opacity. So if I turn that guy on, I can see through my geo. And some of these brushes work pretty well in this mode and some don't. The snake hook doesn't always behave as I would expect it to with transparency mode on. So sometimes it's best to just turn that on and off and then go back into solo mode and uh, work from there. Let's hit shift F to see what kind of poly groups we have. Looks like we have dynamic subdiv on. I'm going to turn, I'm going to hit shift D to go back to my original poly count. Um, and then switch up shift D and then go back to my move topological and start kind of moving some of these teeth around. So I want these teeth to really jut out of his, out of his jawline and kind of poke through, you know, the, uh, his, outside of his lips so we can see those. So we're going to get real crazy with it. And I can always come back here and grab his gum line and move those out. Move a few more of these guys out here. And just really scale up your draw size, hitting S on the keyboard and just dragging that left to right, uh, getting that uh, large enough that you can really pull these things out like so. We're probably not going to use all these because I, I don't want it to look like super creepy. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what it looks like here in a sec. I'm going to turn off solo mode so we can see, okay, we're starting to get those to kind of jut out of his mouth. Push these upper ones in. Transparency mode. See which ones we can pull. Okay, cool. Solo. I'm going to turn off my symmetry for a second and move these out individually and turn it back on, hitting X. Okay, turn off transparency. We're starting to get these to poke through. Let's take a look at our concept, see how close we're getting. Get this nice straight line right here and just like four teeth sticking out is plenty. Switching back. I think I'm going to drop these guys down. And widen these. And let's subdivide by hitting Control D on the keyboard, give us some more polys to work with. Always make sure that you're rotating around frequently, and that's something that uh, it doesn't come for free in 3D. You have to manually, you know, think in your brain, okay, I gotta rotate, and make sure these shapes are looking accurate because it's not like traditional sculpture where you can easily just shift your weight and see it from a different perspective. It's it's a kind of a more of a conscious thing you need to do. Okay. Shift F, turn off our polyframe. <clears throat> Again, I'm still using my move topological. That's that's kind of my big hitter right now. Gonna smooth this out a little. Cool. Kind of getting smiley, so let's make him look a little more unhappy and golemy. All right, his nose, I think, in my concept is a little bit smaller, so we're gonna start working our way up. It's more square and it's uh, definitely smaller, so let's let's bring that up to face a little. Square this out. We're starting to achieve more of a stylized feel, which is something that I like. You know, I, I don't think we're going to get into like poor detail on this character or nothing too crazy. Just uh, kind of some medium and large detailing, maybe a tiny bit of fine detail work. Hit D on the keyboard. That's, that's actually control, uh, control D on this character. Give us some more polygons to work with. So now if we come over to our Geometry drop down, we have three subdivision levels. And if you want to see what your poly count is, you can come over here to your tool and mouse over, and it says uh, Golem 001 polys, about just over 200,000 polys right now. And it gives you your points 
also. Um, so we're still in a good spot. We still have a long ways we can subdivide this character to keep working on him. Um, just smoothing, checking out my topology, seeing where things are lining up. Making the nose a little bit smaller. Using my Damien standard now to kind of carve in this eye bag underneath his eye. I'm going to also carve around the nostril, make that a little more pronounced. Cool. Be a little bit too eye baggy. I'm going to inflate his eyelids, so I'm going to come over here and grab the inflate brush and just add some thickness to those. And one thing you'll find out, so for now, for this character, I think we're gonna we're definitely gonna optimize this for 3D printing. Maybe in a future date, I'll go through a whole production process where we go through texturing and rendering. But for now, this character is gonna be a 3D printed character. And as you're developing the character for 3D print, keep in mind uh, what details are gonna show up once you get to the printer and you print them at scale. Like sometimes I'll be noodling on these little tiny fine details that are never gonna show up. And sometimes I really want those details to show up, so I have to accentuate. Uh, those details to the point where they look almost a little crazy, you know, so that they will come through when it's printed at scale. So just be thinking of that as you're doing this detail work. His ears need some love, so we're going to Alt-Tab and see what I'm looking like over here. Looks like he's got a little bit more of a dangly earlobe. Not everybody has that, but this character does, and so we're going to try to achieve that those shapes better. So we're going to give him a little bit more of an earlobe. Uh, I don't think I have inflate to any hotkeys, do I? That's surprising, because I use inflate an awful lot. Go back to inflate and inflate this guy. I used to know what this thing was called. I don't know anymore. I've decided that there's, there's with anatomy, there's too much to learn. There's too much. I mean, you have people that spend their whole lives learning the names of all these parts. And... It might be better to, to allocate time just trying to get them to look right as opposed to knowing the names of every single part of, of you know, our anatomy or muscles and tendons and ligaments and joints. Obviously, some of the big ones are probably important to learn, but um, let's just learn to make it look right. I think this ear's looking a little bit better. He's got this kind of weird jutting mass behind his jaw, so we're going to, oops. If you'll remember, we turned on RGB. So I'm on my standard brush right now. I need to turn off RGB and turn back on our Z-Add. And now we'll be back into sculpting mode. I'm holding Alt to push in right now. And you can change that default. If you want it to default to Z-Sub, you can click that button and it'll go in. And then you have to hold Alt to push out. Uh, I prefer to keep it on Z-Add though. Okay, I think his face is definitely looking a little bit better, uh, just a little bit more appealing, and we're definitely achieving more of a stylized approach. We kind of want, we want people to be very aware that we're trying for a stylized character as opposed to kind of like a mix of a photo reel. That's a, I think that's a trap that a lot of artists fall into. Like, what, what look are you trying to get? Do you want photo reel or do you want stylized? It's very, very tricky to achieve both and make it look right. Okay, let us, I think my eyes are still pretty tiny. Let's change the shape of those a little. And it looks like he does have a crease for his upper eyelid, so let's try and accentuate that a little. Damien Standard 2, I'm, I'm holding Alt to come out with it. That's a, that's a key with the Damien Standard brush. Just make sure you're going in and out with your detailing. Subtractive and additive. It's uh, one thing that's very easy to see when you look at uh, professional sculptors, like traditional sculptors, sculpture artists, is, is uh, amateur artists tend to do like, you know, either one or the other. They're doing either additive or subtractive, meaning they've only chosen to carve in. And you, you can tell. You can tell with the detailing and the overall quality of the work. 
when they have made they've gone the extra mile to try and uh, do both to add clay to it to bulk things out and also to carve things in and fortunately with a 3d workflow and zbrush it makes it so much easier to uh, to achieve that all right cool we got some weird uh, we want to add make this more pinchy uh, I don't like this like kind of webbing that we've got from the ear connecting the the skin to the the head so we're gonna use the Damien standard and kind of carve that in and just push that a good amount for now and then we can smooth back cool come back around with this guy and another fun one is called H polish and this is basically like a flattening brush and if you if you just left click it'll just polish and try to flatten out that area I love to hold alt while I do it as well I find that I'm using alt more on this brush than probably the subtractive approach so that we can really get this nice sharp kind of vibe here get a nice sharp vibe on his nose so we're really pushing into stylized territory at this point so again it's just the H polish brush holding alt cool all right I'm gonna hit save uh, you can hit save next and it will automatically version up your ZTL. Sometimes that borks if you've been in and out of some different ZBrush processes like Transpose Master. I hope that they figure that stuff out soon because that would be nice. The buttons don't work 100% all the time. So sometimes I'll just be very sure to go to save as and make sure that I'm you know, calling this guy the right thing and then just manually doing that. Because I just feel like this, uh, this version up process in ZBrush is still kind of in development. Should probably submit a ticket to help those guys out with that. Or maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. Alright, cool. His head's looking a lot better. So let's uh, alt tab over to our concept and take a look and compare again. It looks to me like if I try to line this up and do a see through, our proportions are getting much closer. So I'm zooming out trying to uh, uh, trying to just get this guy lined up. Um, but they still have a ways to go. So I'm going to uh, start by increasing our ear size for sure. Probably needs to come up maybe about 35%. And also his head size, his skull size needs to come up. And then um, it's hard to see because our, our concept is in, in pose. But uh, his eyes definitely need to be wider, a little more wide set, and a little more stylized to less uh, like a traditional, like a realistic eye shape. So we'll keep pushing that. Let's do a, um, an inflate on that upper eyelid too because it's still very thin. And then we'll do a Damien standard and kind of try to pull this crease out. This might take a, t a few goes to get it working. There is a an awesome cheat code, if you will, in ZBrush called the uh, Lazy Mouse. If you come up here to Stroke, and go down to lazy mouse and make sure that that is turned on. So a lot of brushes including the Damien standard have this on by default but in order to show you what it's doing I'll drop the lazy step down to zero and then I'll crank the lazy radius and what this does is if you come up here and hold alt and then drag you see that red line behind the cursor it just basically is averaging the stroke amount and just giving you a nice smooth stroke so um, this is really, really handy to use in some situations. In others, when you're trying to have more of kind of an organic sculpty kind of feel, uh, it's, it's not the best. But I, I do use that quite a bit. Just make sure that my the lazy mouse is on. I'm using the H polish to come down here and just make sure my creasing is working nicely. And I'm getting these nice kind of sharp creases. And you can see my lazy mouse is in effect right now. Okay, cool man. Alright, um, fix 
and his eyes, eyes still kind of a little bit weird. And I keep going closer to the center, but they're a little more wide set. So I'm gonna widen those out. And then I'm gonna alt left click on the eyeballs and scoot those back into position. And honestly, uh, I might squash those a little bit. So if I show you in transparency, make sure that they're centered on mass center. And then I'm gonna squash those just a little bit. Because I'm not worried about animation with this character. I'm not worried about these eyes rotating around. I just want it to look cool and be uh, good for a 3D print. So I'm all left clicking back to my face geometry and continuing to modify that shape so it just kind of sinks around that eye a little bit better. I mean, these eyes you can just noodle with forever. I mean, it's just one of those things that all these subtle adjustments can really make or break an eyeball. I don't want this crease so much right here. So I want him to almost look like he's, you know, being caught in a photo in a photo moment, and uh, he's kind of caught by surprise. Using H polish because there's some kind of weird wobblies right here. Holding Alt to come out. All right. So now he's looking a little bit. Yeah, he's he's a little more wide set. I'm gonna fix his eye bags underneath just a little. Make those a little bit less less huge. Smoothing. And I guess I don't know how to make this little bar part look natural. It's a little bit tricky. Cool, okay, so going back to our concepts, eh, it's looking a little bit closer. His eyes might be more inset. And maybe I went a little bit too big with them, but honestly, uh, I drew this concept. There's no concept artist that's gonna yell at me or art director. So if I if I don't match it perfectly, you know, big deal. As long as I'm happy with it in the 3D side too. There's a huge uh, value to being able to kind of concept and fill in those gaps as a 3D artist instead of having to go back in bug concept I think that's uh, it only helps them out you know they get to move on to other projects and uh, you get better as an artist as you learn to how to interpret things in 3d which is a skill in and of itself and it's gonna it's gonna be added value to you if you learn you know okay the concept artist didn't draw this because he only drew this angle but you know what I think I can figure it out and it's just gonna make everything more smooth for the entire process so I recommend just just trying to figure things out as best as you can. Obviously, when you're starting out, it's good to have really good concept and have that locked down and just be like, hey, uh, maybe you might have to go back to concept to, to get things fleshed out a little bit better. But as you get older as an artist, you learn that it's kind of enjoyable to try and fill in the gaps. Like, I didn't draw exactly the detailing underneath this neck right here in that concept, but I'm just going to figure it out. Okay, so... I think I'm going to, let's do this, uh, I think I'm going to make him a little more hunchy because in my concept he's like really hunched over. So I'm just going to achieve that now and then later on that'll, that'll just help us, uh, help us along when we're doing the pose. So I'm going to do uh, control, hold control, go to mask lasso, I'm going to lasso, lasso his head and then I'm going to blur that mask and then um, I guess the other thing I'm going to have to do is mask his eyeballs and his mouth because we're gonna move those two you know what I need to invert those masks so never mind they need to be I don't know what I'm thinking those don't need to be masked so I'm gonna invert this mask and now we're ready to rock uh, sometimes it's a very backwards way of thinking the whole masking thing but uh, I'm still figuring it out even all these years later alright make sure that all of our sub tools are turned on so everything's gonna follow along so you can see his teeth and his eyes are moving with my my movements even though they're in a separate sub tool and then we'll come back here and just readjust our neck proportions. And we're starting to really get into golem territory. Give him a little bit of some traps. He's been doing his shoulder shrugs, you know, with his weights. I'm going to turn down my uh, lazy radius on my Damien standard brush. Snake hook, continue to use the snake hook as much as I possibly can. Cool. 
Okay, um, his face is getting to be in a good spot. Now, let's talk about hair. So, if we come over to our concept, I'll tab over. Uh, I've given him intentionally a little bit more hair than um, he would have, like per se, in the movies. Because uh, I like that better. I, don't, I never liked his kind of stringy, strandy hair in the movies. I think it looks kind of silly. Um, but uh, we're going to try and achieve this look, but it's going to be modeled hair. I'm not going to do like actual individual strands because that's not going to work super well with uh, 3D printing. It's going to be a little more complicated. Um, so we're going to do what's called a mesh extract. So if I come back over here to ZBrush and then um, overall, I think I'm going to adjust the shape of his head just a little bit quickly before I do this. And now if I hold control, I, right now I have mask lasso and that'll, that'll be fine. So if I've snapped, I've right click, as I'm rotating, I'm holding shift, I'm switching to the profile view and I'm holding control lasso. Oh, I got my dog here. Hold on one sec. Okay, so I'm just uh, adjusting the profile a little bit more. I'm going to, I'm getting sidetracked. We're going to get to the hair, I promise. Um, but I wanted to push his jaw out a little bit more in line with our concept based on the profile. I just want it really jutting out there. And then the back of his head needed some love. His nose has a kind of weird uh, dent in it. I want it to be more, uh, what's the word, convex. His eyebrows popping out just a little bit more. Cool. All right. I think we're ready for hair. So if I hold control, I've got my mask, lasso, brush. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start dragging our hairline out. So if I come over here, give him a little bit of a sideburn, and then come back here just like so. And then I'm going to go back to hold control and come back over here and uh, activate the mask pen. And then I'm going to color this part in right here. Okay, so we've got is is a uh, hair mask done and what I want to do is I want to create geometry out of this that I can work on and throw it into another sub tool and so if you come over to your uh, sub tool uh, palette and go over to extract and hit extract you'll see that it uh, it creates this fun little like mini miniature afro for our character and if I rotate around I lose it because it's not fully activated yet it's just kind of giving you a preview so hit extract again and if you want to actually create geo out of this and throw it into another sub tool, let's do this. I'll do, I'm going to change my sub tool visibility count so you can see what's happening. So now if I hit accept, boom, it made another hair uh, sub tool that I can work on. And if you try to actually play with it, it's it, it default is mask. So you have to clear your mask by holding control, left clicking and dragging outside of your geometry. Um, got a little slurry there. Sorry about that little tipsy I guess. Uh, no, so now I'm just going to continue to use the snake hook tool and um, smooth this out and make it look a little bit less, you know, like he's, I don't know, like a, like a mailman or something. And I am going to look at my concept and see which way to go here real quick. So it's very stringy, strandy kind of stuff. And I think the best uh, approach is to use our, continue to use our snake hook tool what I'm going to do is show you a fancy thing called Sculptures Pro. So if you come over here, you see this interesting little button here. You turn that on, and what happens is if now, if I come in here and I drag this guy out like that, it actually generates geometry as I pull the geometry out, as opposed to if I have that turned off and I try to do the same thing. You see that? Like it totally breaks because there's only so many polygons in this. If I hit Shift F, there's only so many polygons to work with. So Sculptors Pro is awesome for this. So I can come in here and just pull out some stringy strands of hair and kind of come down the side of his face. And uh, right now I don't have symmetry turned on because I want them to look different. Um, and then just be sure to like rotate around too because it's, it's obviously only doing this on one plane. So you got to make sure that you're rotating. And some brushes work well with Sculptors Pro, others do not. So like your smooth brush works with it if you hold uh, sm uh, shift and start smoothing, it'll maintain. Uh, I believe the standard brush works with it, so as you stand it over, 
it'll start to, you can see it's creating polygons as I'm interacting with it. Not all brushes work very well with it, just fair warning. Turn Shift F off, polyframe off. Also, if you scale your, your brush size up, it'll make you, it'll, it'll give you less dense poly count. And you can adjust all of this in your Sculptors Pro settings. It's somewhere over here, I think it's in geometry. Uh, I lied, completely lied, where is it? Dynamic sub dude. Maybe it's a sub tool. Sculptors Pro. I'm going blind. I think I'm blind to it. I, you guys. Hmm. There's a way to do it, but um, uh, I, it eludes me at this point. But if you, you'll notice if you if you keep your draw size small, it'll give you more polygons. If you keep it large, it'll give you less polygons. But either way, it still kind of achieves the same kind of vibe, kind of effect. There's also insert mesh brushes that you can get for this kind of stuff too, where you can just draw them out fairly simply. Um, if that catches your fancy, but for now I'm just gonna I'm gonna do the uh, the snake hook and um, sculptures uh, pro method. So how we doing over here? Looking at our concepts now. Um, one thing that we've noticed is I don't like these little jaggy polygons, right? They look kind of silly. They look weird. So I can always come over here and re-click my Dynamesh button and um, make sure that my resolution is set high enough to like f probably above that, probably a thousand or something. And then it'll give me those polygons that I'm looking for. And because I have Sculptures Pro mode on still as I'm smoothing, you gotta be careful while you smooth. Um, but just keep in mind, you know, you're going to be turning that on and off with the, uh, with different brushes. So we get to one thing I like to do is just hold smooth and then uh, like scale the draw size up and hold smooth, and it'll kind of cut it away erode it down a little bit. I'm going to turn my symmetry back on with the snake hook, Sculptures Pro on, and start to drag my hair in the back a little bit, give him a little bit more of a mullet kind of deal, because I guess that's in style nowadays. Turning off symmetry now because that'll look weird, giving him a little bit of a rat tail. I like to tease my kids when they get their rat tails and they need to go get haircuts. Lucky devils still have hair. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he's getting some. Oop. <coughs> Remember to turn off Sculptors Pro when you have your draw size large and you're just adjusting large forms. Make sure you make sure that's turned off. Okay. Another cool brush that I haven't used much um, in this tutorial, but it's one of my more favorite brushes. Is that as the clay buildup? So come over here and turn that guy on. And one thing that's important to know is you're gonna want to have like if I go like this, for example, and I sculpt like that, it's gonna come through the other side of my geo because there's you know there's only so much thickness here. And one way to get around that is to come over to uh, where was it? It was brush. Yeah, brush auto masking. And then turn on the back face mask brush. And now if I do the exact same thing, it won't affect anything on the back side of the faces. This is key. Uh, just remember this is, uh, this is there because that's very, very helpful, especially when you're working on thin things that have just a little bit of thickness like clothing and things like that. And you just want to sculpt out and you don't want to modify the interior of, of your mesh at all. So I'm just kind of coming around and just sculpting in some hair, seeing how that looks. Adding some clumps and some, you know, bulking that out. And then I'm going to go back and just kind of run a smooth over it with symmetry on. Coming all the way down to the tips of those hairs and maybe giving a little bit of waviness to it. And 
a lot of people's hair, when it gets longer, it starts to get this kind of wave, you know. So I've got this bump right here. Uh, it doesn't just kind of shrink wrap to the shape of the head always, unless it's like wet. Just keep that in mind. So, another uh, fun brush is our old friend, the, uh, the Damien Standard brush, which I'm switching over to now. And then I'm going to smooth this out and get these... And I'm going to re-dye mesh real quick. So give us the polygons where we need. And I have, having my Damien Standard brush, I can come in here and start to sort of refine that detail. And remember to hold Alt to pop stuff out. And then push stuff in by just left clicking. But it's, those, it's a combination of those two techniques, I think, that really make things look interesting. So I'm pushing in. And I'm pulling out. Okay, we'll turn off solo mode and see what we've got here. Yeah, he's looking kind of like emo. He looks like he would be uh, like on a member of Pearl Jam or like, I don't know, maybe like a Nickelback or some, somebody right now with this hairdo. But we'll keep refining this. This like isn't final by any means. Let's take a look at our concept and see uh, where we are. So he's got longer hairs that kind of come in through the back through from his mullet. And I, I dig that. So I'm going to try to push these the length on these a little bit more, these kind of these strands, and uh, allow those to kind of come down lower. Get some curl in these as they get longer. Be sure to always just continue to rotate and see things at different angles. Hmm. Definitely don't want wider at the bottom than, you know, you don't want these little non-uniform kind of in inflations going on. They look kind of non-uniform inflations. That's an interesting band name. Sometimes I just say things, you know. This guy. Cool. Turn back on our snake hook for fun, for funsies. Continue to pull these guys out. So when we get him in pose, we want to be able to just like make these guys kind of hang down nice. Just like our concept, because that's something we do like. Again, be sure to comment and let me know how I'm doing. I'm still very, very new at this, you know, YouTube tutorial series kind of shenanigans. So, um, uh, very new to teaching in general. I've spent the last 12, 15 years working in the video game and film industries as an asset artist, as a character artist, and um, a 3D person. So, I haven't spent a lot of time teaching, just kind of learning from incredible people and I'm just trying to give back a little bit I find that I I love to teach um, but I, I definitely need to work on it so let me know in the comments what's going on how I'm doing as as usual it is crazy I bet you're gonna see maybe maybe one comment so just starting out you know just getting this thing started uh, one thing I'm doing right now is I'm inflating and inflating will help to add some nice interesting kind of creasing and stuff where we like and it kind of mitigates that stretching nature you know the things naturally caused by our snake hook brush um, this guy's out a little bit more redyna mesh and going back to the inflate brush cool all right so i think this is good for now uh maybe we're going to wrap it up on this uh this video and clearly there's still a lot that needs to be improved and adjusted. Um, we've got our emo, our emo golem going. Let's straighten out his lip. One of the things I liked about the concept is how kind of straight his lip was. It didn't have a lot of these undulations.
And for these, I don't want perfect symmetry. You know, like perfect symmetry is super, uh, it's super lame sometimes. You want, you want to mix things up and, you know, make this tooth stick out a little bit more so it's not, it's not doing the same thing on the right hand side as it's doing on the left hand side. And that, that to me adds a certain level of quality to a sculpture. It's so easy to do, just leave symmetry on in ZBrush because it, you know, it cuts your workload in half, but it just doesn't look as, as good in the end. So I'm gonna chip this tooth down a good amount, I think. And again, I'm using my Move Topological Brush. So it is adhering to the topology of the actual mesh that I'm working with. And uh, alt left click onto his upper lip, and I'm gonna bring that out just a little. It's not so sunken in. We don't want him to look super methy. I mean, it's gonna be hard not to. He's already kind of getting there. Uh, I'm gonna pull, pop out this brow wrinkle just a little as well. And using the H polish, gonna flatten up my detailing. And my Damien Standard to refine those creases. Another very, very fun brush that I love to use is the Pinch Brush. So if you hit P on the keyboard, uh, you'll see Pinch, so P and then I will get you the Pinch Brush. And if you scale uh, your draw size down, it just creases those lines and makes them super sharp. And honestly, it's fun to actually scale your draw size up sometimes and just run the pinch around and it'll modify your character in very interesting ways. So I use that one a lot as well. I think I have that set to a hotkey. His nostrils need to come in look a little less flared. Not flaring. All right, cool. I think this is good for his head and we're definitely going to refine his hair more. And then in the next video, I'm going to, for save, I'm going to jump into his, you know, his hands are very mushy. Generally, his body is still very, very, very early on, very mushy. And then um, I think we're going to, yeah, we'll focus on his hands and on his feet a little bit and then generally kind of go throughout the body and refine his detailing in the next video, uh, refine his hair. And then towards the end of that video, we'll jump into posing our our golem character so uh again as always like comment subscribe and sh surely be uh, definitely be sure to comment because um i need the feedback and uh i, I love to hear it so uh comment crack a joke uh tell me what kind of music you're listening to right now i don't know i'm listening to all kinds of stuff on spotify at the moment i'm kind of in more like an ambient phase um what am i listening to I really like this uh, band called uh, DeLorean, like the, I think it's, I think it's, oh, Del Dorian Concept, Dorian Concept. It's kind of like an uh, ambient electronic kind of stuff, which is really good to sculpt too. So anyway, um, yeah, so we will uh, jump into the further detailing this character, plusing him, and we'll see you in the next video.